Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Daz. I'm Office Bloke Mike. Here we are, the two of us. Yeah, yeah. If Patreon's your thing, check out the link in the description below. Loads of stuff on there. All starting for a bargain price of just... Uh, £1.50 a month. There you go, check out the link. Yeah, Loads a couple of dollars, eh? Hmm. Uh, how the American flag has changed through history. I think it's probably the most oh. iconic flag on the wo in the world. I guess it is probably yeah. the most well known, isn't that, it? That, that yeah. Union Jack. Union I think Jack's so. Quite, uh, quite iconic as yeah, well, isn't it? And, and it's, it's on know, quite a few of the flags. Yeah, it is yeah. actually. Yeah, there's mm. quite a few other countries around the world, like Australia and New Zealand. That, New Zealand. Fiji. There's loads, loads of yeah, yeah. There's loads of right. Caribbean islands with it. I think uh, does Hawaii have the Union Jack on it? Oh, I don't think so. But mm. Aiden, Aiden's the guy for flags. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. He's, I went to a party one day and some kid, some kid was there, same age as Aiden, was a little bit older than Aiden, and he said something about flags. And Aiden went, "I'll roast you on flags." He went, "You won't, will, will, will not." Yeah. And I went, "I don't know what." I did it like when they do it at the office. I got my money out, and I went, "I'll have a bet on Aiden." So <laughs> there's, there's fifty quid if anyone. That you went, "I'll put fifty quid," and his dad went, "I'll put fifty quid on him." Oh, so really? I was like, "Aiden, don't let me down." Yeah. Aiden just nailed it. Did he? He don't, he don't miss many. Right. Yeah, he gets like he gets weird ones as well. Yeah, you know, like proper like oddball. Is it just something that he likes looking at? Yeah, he's just into flags. He's into right. geography. Right, he's really into it. But he's uh, he smashes flags. He'd never challenge him on flags, mate. Yeah, no, nah, you waste waste the time. <laughs> he gets ones <laughs> countries I've never even heard of. Yeah, and he's saying, telling you what flag. Really it is. obscure ones and yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, yeah, brilliant. But yeah, it's um, also red, white, and blue. Um, I don't know how many flags are red, white, and blue. Around the world, but it seems to be a very popular. Yeah. So, like, ours is red, white, and blue as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Same as, isn't it? But let's get into it. How the it's changed. I didn't know it changed at all. To be honest, but maybe there's certain. Well, don't is it the stripes that indicate the thirteen original colonies? Right. And the stars would have to change because they're the states. That's the states. So I'm guessing that has changed slightly over the years. Yeah. Let's get into it and find out. One of the most recognized symbols in the U.S. of A. The red, white, and blue conjures up images of Uncle Sam, summertime barbecues, and too many country songs to count. While the stars and stripes have long defined America, you may be surprised to know that the flag itself wasn't defined for quite a while. Before, during, and after the Revolutionary War rocked the 1770s, patriots spread all over the country had their own idea of what we should be running up the flagpole. In other words, the American flag has long been a work in progress. Was that a thing? Progress picks to go mm. along with it. So... Today, we're letting our history freak flags fly as we tell you about every version of the American flag. Yeah. One thing I love about um, American patriotism is when he, I went to the um, uh, Titans versus the chart. I can't remember who it was now. Titans against the... Uh, who's the... Uh, it's on one of the... Uh, I can't remember who they played now, anyway. Yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars, someone like that. Um, but the, the, the flag's out at the start. They know they're rolling the flag out. Yeah. Uh, they're singing the national anthem. It's all American patriotism. We don't have that over here. No, we don't really, do we? You, you get like you get offended if you if you fly a flag over here, which is yeah. kind of weird. But when you look at like what they do in America, you, know, you go to football games over here. They don't show any. There's no flags flying or anything. No, not like at that. all. They're no, all, they only they only do the national anthem at the championship at the, the final at the final of the FA yeah. Cup, isn't yeah. it? And that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. But yeah, you just you just don't see flags over here. No, that much no. do you? No. Sometimes St George's Day, you'll see yeah. a few uh, George Cross sort mm. of flags, but. Uh, yeah, I don't but know. In a, we're we're in a new office now in a high street in a like in a in a town centre. If you walk through the town centre, watch how many British flags are on on display. Yeah, There's loads, right. loads of them. Yeah, mm. so uh, check it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, let's get back into this. But before we get into old glory's glow up, why don't you hit that subscribe button? Then drop us a line in the comments and let us know what other American art history you want to hear about. For now, let's sing some Yankee Doodle Dandy and Grand Old Flag. When America was getting its rocky start during the Revolutionary War in 1775, they needed a flag to hoist and call their own, separate from the British. The solution was a mixture of the Union flag for the kingdoms of England and Scotland and the familiar 13 stripes representing the 13 original United Colonies. George Washington was the first to use the flag for the Continental that Army, bad, which boosted that. its popularity <laughs> and made it the flag to display during that era. The flag had the makings of what its successors would end up looking like. However, the Union Jack in the corner seemed to imply eventual reconciliation with Great Britain. So when the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776, the Grand Union flag swiftly fell out of fashion. A year after that first Independence Day, the Flag Act of 1777 attempted to standardize what the American flag should look like. On June 14th, it became official. The 13 stripes in alternating red and white, we love, in. But instead of the Union Jack, 
They opted for 13 stars within a blue field, representing Boo. a new constellation. <laughs> the Euro. How dare you? Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> June 14th. In 1751, founding father Benjamin Franklin made a joke that the new colony should send England a gift of rattlesnakes. And everyone had a good laugh. <laughs> Do you think that's funny? You should see his Netflix special. Though it's mostly about cancel culture, which is weird. Because it's like, you're Benjamin Franklin. Nobody's trying to cancel you. Also, aren't you dead? Anyway, people <laughs> loved the Association of America and Rattlesnakes so much that it inspired South Carolina patriot Christopher Gatson to create a flag that represented his view of the new world. The coiled and ready-to-strike timber rattlesnake on a yellow background with the words, Don't Tread on Me, underneath, became one of the most popular symbols of the American Revolution with its defiant and vigilant stance against those who would do us harm. Also, snakes are really cool. The flag rose to new heights after being unfurled on the mast of the flagship USS Alfred, commanded by Commodore Isaac Hopkins. Hopkins was made commander-in-chief of the Navy, and he used the Gadsden flag as his personal flag during the war. Today, you could still find the Gadsden flag used by history enthusiasts and neighbors you drive by and think, ah, so that's the libertarian, as well as several variations and parody versions for just about any cause you could think of. That's freedom, <laughs> baby. <laughs> The Battle of Bunker Hill was an important part of the early Revolutionary War. The British had besieged Boston and attempted to take control of the harbor by fortifying Bunker and Breed's Hill. When the colonial forces heard about this, they did their best to push back, but ultimately retreated against the British. Not all was lost, however. As the British counted their dead from the encounter, they realized just how much of a force they were up against now that a ragtag band of rebellion fighters were able to give such a significant pushback against the mighty British army. Allegedly, throughout the battle, the Continental troops rallied behind a certain primarily blue flag with England's St. George Cross in the upper left corner. However, as a way to throw a bit of shade, literally and figuratively, the cross is defaced with a pine tree a symbol of like lebanon mm. lebanon have a pine tree don't they oh do they yeah i think so ah, in the middle right well, something like that anyway looks like it's a, some form of tree I yeah think. Oh, right. new Never that. well this story is a good one there's no way to actually prove that the flag ever appeared on the battlefield can a flag commit stolen valor We assume this flag was created between 1776 and 1777, since that's around when Long Island Minuteman Captain John Holbert commanded his soldiers. However, historians have since been divided on the authenticity of this discovery, claiming the flag dates back to the 19th century, not the 18th. Debates aside, in 1927, the faded and tattered flag was found on a Long Island property owned by Holbert. And the flag is notable because it appears to be the precursor of what would eventually become the official American flag. It had the red and white stripes in the blue canton complete with 13 stars, though their placement was unique, almost as if someone tried to duplicate the crosses of St. George and St. Andrew using mm. only stars. Mm. Or a snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the legendary Betsy Ross flag is probably the most recognizable flag to fly during the American Revolution. The flag features all the best bits from each previous flag attempt, including seven red stripes, six white stripes, and a blue canton with a circle of five pointed stars inside. The story goes that George Washington and financier Robert Morris commissioned upholsterer Betsy Ross to make the flag based on a design by Morris. However, some historians dispute the claim that Ross had anything to do with the flag's creation, as no paper trail supports the notion that she was even in the room when it happened. So write a musical about that, Lynn. Despite the uncertainty, the Betsy Ross flag story has stuck through the ages. With its red representing valor, white purity, and blue loyalty, the Betsy <coughs> Ross flag was the most popular flag of the original 13 colonies and has cemented its place in history as the great-great-great-grandfather of old glory today, no matter who sewed it together. Before we had a nationally accepted flag in America, there was a lot of hubbub around what the flag should represent. Many were adamant that the 13 colonies be a prominent feature, while others wanted to ensure the colors red, white, and blue made it in there. Then you got the guys who were ticked off about Britain's relative tolerance of French Catholics in Canada and wanted the flag to represent that. It was like Seinfeld's Festivus. Everyone got a chance to air their grievances. And the George Rex flag was a fabric forged by grievances with Catholicism, with which the largely Protestant Britain had some major issues. The Quebec Act of 1774 removed references to Protestant faith in the Oath of Allegiance, allowing the province of Quebec to practice Catholicism freely. The Protestant colonists in New York and New England didn't like that one bit. 
and made sure their flag reflected that. In a not-so-subtle diss, the addition of no popery flew high in New York neighborhoods as a protest popery. to the king's mm. government. Boy, popery is a word we just don't use enough. Try to use it in a casual conversation today. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> We're using the pop. 1776 or so, the people of Easton, Pennsylvania, wanted to hoist a flag during the public reading of the Declaration of Independence when it came through their town. So they decided to whip up their own. Oh, the, the 1777 way. Yeah. Flag Act was specific on what the American flag should look like. And to Easton's credit, they followed every direction. It has red, white, and blue, stars, stripes, the whole nine yards. They just decided to get a little creative with the placement, effectively reversing the location of the stars and the stripes. If you ever find yourself in Easton, check out the Easton Area Public Library, which houses the flag to this day. The flag that was supposedly carried into battle at Bennington, Vermont in 1777 is supposed because historians aren't so sure the Bennington flag was there at all. More likely, the flag was designed around the War of 1812, or even in 1826, to mark the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The flag is unique in several ways, most obviously by the large 76 in the corner, commemorating the year America declared its independence. Other slight changes from designs at the time is the string mm. placement, with white replacing red compared to yeah. other designs. There are still 13 stars, but they are seven pointed instead of the familiar five points. Despite, or perhaps because of its differences, the flag is a popular variant with flag collectors both inside and outside of Vermont. The Brandywine flag. The flag mm. with its own little flag Too inside. Red. Flagception. It's square, isn't September it? 1777 saw the massive Battle of Brandywine, where more troops fought than any other battle in the Revolution. Such a battle required a flag to fly, but since there was still no unified national flag, the various militias would often carry their own flags into battle. This specific design may have been primarily associated with the 7th Pennsylvania Regiment Company, under the command of Captain Robert Wilson. The Brandywine flag holds the distinction of being one of the very first colony flags to feature 13 stars and 13 stripes, a Pronto version of the flag America uses today. Didn't like that one. If no, I'm not keen. Scheme Ooh. Is clue, this wow. one comes from the time the United States... Do me eyes in that, that though, yeah. Nightmare. It's a bit different, one, that one. Two, King George is coming for you. But for realsies, during the Revolutionary War, the British <laughs> them. had been yeah. Vincennes, Indiana. Hold and them. Patriot <laughs> George Roger Clark wanted it. So he led a battle to Vincennes to take it, and upon his victory, flew the red and green Clark flag to celebrate. This is the only early flag yeah. concept in America to feature this unique color pairing. Today, the George Rogers Clark flag may not be flown too much, but you can get Christmas wrapping paper that looks similar enough for <laughs> a <laughs> of cost. <laughs> The Serapis flag was an American flag Too busy. with standard stars yeah, it's and stripes, a bit in it. but every third stripe was colored blue instead of the typical alternating red and white. Benjamin Franklin wrote about this flag to his ambassador to Naples, describing its design in detail. Excited that the stars on the flag denoted a new constellation, Franklin even had one sewed up and shipped off to his naval officer buddy, John Paul Jones. Jones happened to be flying the flag when his crew captured the British naval ship HMS Serapis in 1779, giving the unchosen flag its official name. Of all the flags during America's childhood, mm. the Bedford flag is by and large the most unique. Looks like the cover of a book. It does. It's really it's strange a for yeah. a flag, isn't it? Yeah. Really strange. The Bedford flag saw others using stars and stripes in their design and said, no thanks. Likely created in the early 1700s as a cavalry militia's banner in Massachusetts, the Bedford was carried into battle by Minuteman and Massachusetts native Nathaniel Page. The flag made no secrets as to what the Minutemen were about, featuring an armored arm, a dagger, and the Latin phrase, vinca out morira, which translates to conquer or die. And if that doesn't make you want to run away with your red tailcoats between your legs, we're not sure what will. <laughs> Let's face it, before the American loyalist bested the British at the Battle of Cowpens, South Carolina, the Revolutionary War was not going well for the 13 colonies. And supposedly, the battle that paved the way for America's victory featured a specific flag flying. William Batchelor, the 3rd Maryland Regiment, carried a flag into... I want to know mm -hmm. which I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to find out. I don't know the answer to this. You might know. Oh yeah. Why did they have bands in night like, military? 
I think it was just to get the troops sort of marked. A lot of them were marching songs, yeah. so we'd sort of like marching, marching to the a band. beat, and yeah. you know they'd come towards the enemy, and they'd look, mm. they're all marching in time, and they're supposed to look yeah, intimidating, and yeah, makes they're sense. supposed to get the yeah. get the sort of like the like uh, all the armies like really stirred up, mm. and you know like a, maybe like Fire a great belly type like, thing, maybe like a great rock tune or a driving tune, and get you going. Up, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, but, yeah, yeah, get the fire in the belly and get them. Yeah, sort just of, like, no, never up. thought of it. I've never thought of it before. Just till I've seen these, and I thought, what, what's the What's the uh, relevance yeah, behind I it? I think a bit of intimidation it, yeah. against the yeah. opposition where you've got this band coming over and mm. you know, a loud noise and everything. Yeah, so. I guess that's it. Yeah. Mm. Battle that featured 13 white and red stripes and 13... Although, to be fair, I'd rather go into battle with a machine gun than a pistol. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hand, boy, turn it yeah. off. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you're driving <laughs> and the music's loud, like, you turn it down, don't you? Yeah. When you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going in, what do you think? If you tube a lot, aren't you thinking, I wish I had a gun. In white stars on the background. However, the placement of the eight-pointed stars was unique. Instead of 13 in a circle like the Betsy Ross variant, 12 stars form a circle around the 13th. However, some historians take issue with this origin story as Bachelor's Regiment was not part of the battle, making this thing more likely a 19th like century design yeah, it's quite nice, rather so. than one flown during the Revolutionary War. Sorry, Bachelor, we cannot give you a rose. So what do you think? Want to hear more about... Yeah, good. That. I like this channel. Yeah, weird Excellent. history. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting about the different flags and you know, different. Yeah. I mean, I've never really looked in. I'm, I've never really been into history. Yeah, sort of thing. It's like one of them subjects that's like you know, it, 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 I'm passive. I think I was more yeah. into it after I'd left school. That Same. school wasn't particularly interesting. Mm. But after that, then there are certain programs I watch now. I think actually, yeah. it's, you know, looking back, it's that like, quite interesting. I know. I like the uh, commentary by this guy as well. Narration yeah, he's, is a uh, bit, bit of humour in there yeah. as well. Yeah, it's yeah, nice, it's good, yeah. nice voice to listen yeah, to. It's that, a good channel. So. I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy I thought they showed like the. The one that we got now at the end there, though. Well, they show it all the way through. But when you, when you think yeah, about it, so. when you think about the American flag and what to say about how, um, when you look at other flags around the world, you don't see them as much as you see the American flag. You see yeah. the American flag everywhere. You yeah, see it all, all the time. over TVs. You see it on, you know, even when people are like, um, you know, if you go to a, if you go to a beach in like Mexico or somewhere, some guy's got the American flag shorts on, yeah, or American flag girl in a bikini or whatever, and you see him like in movies. You see, you just see American flags everywhere. Yeah, you know, well, you do, yeah. Whereas our flag, you don't really. Like I say, it's not quite as so much of it's still quite rare. well known as well though. I mean, everyone knows the British flag, don't yeah. so. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of flags out there that people know probably in every country. Oh yeah, but... you're going to know your own country flag without a doubt. Yeah, you, know, you go to most is... countries. Most countries in the world will know the American flag. Yeah. They'll know uh, the British yeah, flag. I think, I think one of the uh, other ones that stand out for me, like uh, that you, you know, you look at. I mean, even when you look at some European ones like Belgium and Germany, very similar. Yeah, you know, similar sort of colours, sort of thing. But when you look at Canada's flag, it's Canada very unique. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. You do see that quite a lot as well. Yeah, very standout. Yeah. Maybe in Chinese flag, you know, people yeah. know it straight mm. off just because of the size yeah. of the country. And, yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, they are Good. flags. It's, uh, it's, it's a weird thing, flags, isn't it? When you, yeah. when you think about it. The more, you deep you think, more, more deeper you think, what the, what the meaning is behind them, the more you think, oh, okay. Yeah. It becomes more relevant. Sort that's of it. There normally is sort of some sort of meaning behind yeah. it, but, you know, yeah. most of the ones we don't know about. So that's why it's uh, quite interesting that, yeah, yeah. the idea come about. But. Mm. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.